seated. God is on your side. Come on, I say God is on your side. God is for you. Nobody can be against you. You will prevail. You will win. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah 27, number 5. Chosen for a divine visitation. Isaiah 27, number 5. Let them lay hold of my protection. Let them make peace with me. For emphasis, God is repeating himself in his word. He said, let them make peace with me. When a man is at peace, it means the man is whole. Peace in your life. Peace in your career. Peace in your marriage. Peace in your destiny. Jesus in the world was called the Prince of Peace. And I don't know what is troubling your heart. Whatever is disturbing your peace, I decree on this altar. God will remove that thing. Anytime God visits his people, anytime his prayers made manifest, there must be miracles. That's why I believe all the prayers we're going to pray today, God will answer your prayers. Let's look at a man that God visited. So many people in the scriptures that God visited. And they had an encounter with the Most High God. I can give you on and on so many examples. A woman left a city full with her husband, with her children, because of famine. Went to another city looking for provision. But disaster came upon her. She left full. She came back empty. They called her Naomi, pleasant, beautiful. But her testimony changed. Say, look at me. Don't call me Naomi. Call me another name. And I don't know the name they are calling you right now. I don't know what is going on right now. But do you know God raised her for that woman? Through a young girl who really encouraged her in destiny. You know the story. The lineage of Jesus. You see that woman's name there. Called Ruth. Oh, another man in the Bible. An idol worshiper. And God visited him. He did not know God. But God knew him. And when God met with him, God changed his name. Give him a word, Genesis 12, if you read from verses 1 to 5. God gave him so many promises. Oh, you travel quickly to the New Testament. You see another man, a businessman. An entrepreneur, laboring, but with a bit of struggle. Because the Bible says that he labored all night long and he caught nothing. They called him Peter. God visited him, Jesus saw him, made a demand of him, and the man responded, Make peace with me, saith the Lord. You know the story. After that visitation, the man became prosperous because God gave him a divine direction. Some of us are listening to me today. What is lacking is divine direction. Some of us are listening to me right now. What is missing in your life is that you don't have an encourager in destiny. Some of us are listening to me right now. You look at yourself as if you are not qualified. Yes, you are a sinner. But you know God knows about that. 
That's why I love the word. The Bible says, if any man, if any man makes peace with God and is a new creation, all things will be erased. But specifically this morning, I saw the story of this man I'm going to share with us. I'm then going to use his principles, his points that in my sermon to pray for one thing before the end of this year. The rebuilder of destiny, visit me. It does not matter what you have seen. It does not matter what is going on. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Help me tell you, you say, neighbor, God will answer all of your prayers in the name of Jesus. In John chapter 5, let's read quickly from verses 2 to 9. John 5, 2 to 9. And I'm reading from ESV here. Now there is in Jerusalem the ship gate a pool, which in Aramaic called Bethsida, which has five roofed colonnades. In this lake, Begin to lay emphasis and pay attention. In this lay a multitude, not one, not two, not three, multitude of invalids, blind, which represent vision, lame, which represents speed, and paralyzed, which represents stagnation. One man was there who had been an invalid for how many years? Please answer me how many years? It's in your Bible for 38 years. 40 minus 2. 40 is the number of purpose. This man has been paralyzed for 38 years. A fool at 40. It's a fool forever. Two years to go. God stepped in. And this man has been there. The Bible says, when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? When will you agree with God? That's a question. Destiny question. I'm not preaching to everybody. Remember, choose him for a divine visitation. Not the multitude. Not everybody. But somehow you are there. And you've been paralyzed. You have been blind. You stagnated. Things are not working. And men are beginning to mock you. Very soon the Lord will change your story. Jesus asked the man, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I'm going, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, get up. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, get up. Come on, why are you saying gently, boldly? One more time. Stop pitying the devil. Stop celebrating your breakdowns. I will arise. I know who I am. I will arise and go back to my father. I want to make peace with my father. Get up, Jesus said to this man. Take up your bed and do what? And walk. And I'm about to be distracted a bit here. The man had been paralyzed for 38 years. For a long time. Jesus was not addressing this man by his past. By his current situation, he was addressing the man by his future. Be careful before they sentence you to your negative past. Jesus said, get up. Take up your bed and do what? And walk. And look at the Bible. The Bible says, and at once the man was healed. He took up his bed and walked. Immediately, King James says, the man took up his bed and walked. The man was healed immediately. I prophesy to you, wherever you may be located, this day, God will give you your miracle. This man had been there for 38 years, but God surprised him. He was paralyzed. He was helpless. He had no one to help him. Maybe that's like your story. 
struggling and you are trying, trying to make it. But guess what? This man had been there waiting for the water to be troubled. Who told him about the pool? Who took him there? How was he fending for himself? Who was taking him to the bathroom? Was he smelling? But he was there. He was there. And the Bible says, once in a year, the angel will come to trouble the water. When I saw that, I underlined it in my Bible. I said, Jehovah, trouble my trouble. Disrupt my distraction. When God is in the matter, the matter will matter. Look at yourself. I will make it. I will get up. I will walk. I will be healed. I will advance in the name of Jesus. But let's look at this man for a second and then we pray because this man was limited. But when Jesus came, he helped him. 38 years, he was in sorrow. 38 years, he failed. Every time he made an attempt, somebody was always beating him. 38 years, he was stagnated. 38 years, nothing happened. But the day Jesus saw him and visited him, divine breakthrough came. You are not here by accident. You are not listening to me by accident. Your time has come. And I decree in that name that is far above her name. This day will be your day of divine visitation. Because when this happens, number one, when God comes and chose you, remember that of many, a day will come, the witness will come. It might be a word you are reading. It might be a someone you are listening to. It might be in a dream. It might be somehow you are weeping. And then that silent voice will come. I will help you. I have chosen you. Those are the times when you are praying in the woods. And then you remember scriptures like, hey, weeping me endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. That's a signal from heaven for divine visitation. You may be praying and you are wondering. But when God comes so that we stay with the sermon, what will happen? There will be healing. God can never visit you and you remain the same. Look at the word Exodus 15, 26. Because these are the things facing us in our lives. You are rich. You are wealthy. You are okay. But there is a but. There is sickness somewhere. Oh, you are okay. Good appetite. But you can't sleep on time. Oh, you can sleep like crazy. But hunger will not allow you to sleep. That's a but. But when God visits you, what happened? Exodus 15, 26, the Bible says, the great physician is the one that heals you. And when he comes, guess what will happen? Please believe me, there will be what we call divine surgery. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And this Jesus is inside of you. But sir, you don't really understand me. My own case is different. It's so difficult. This man was there for how many years? 38 years. Purpose was almost defeated. Two years to go. I pray today God will touch you. So if you're sick in your body, I want you to believe the Lord your God. Today, God will choose you. Look at the word Exodus 3. 3. Number 25, Exodus 23, 25. How can God heal me? What can I do for God to heal me? The Bible says, so you shall serve the Lord your God. Service. And God will bless your bread. And God will bless your water. And God says, personally, like a surgeon, performing surgical operation, I will take away sickness from among you. I will take away sickness from among you. I will take away sickness from among you. That is the word of the Lord, not my word. The word of Jehovah. In our church here, not elsewhere. Don't worry, I won't mention the name. 
a boy was brought to us. And then we agreed together by faith to pray. Why? Because that boy was, was, was said to be autistic, if that is the right word. They play the drum, the boy would be hyper. They sing, the boy would be hyper. Whatever they are doing, the boy was always reacting. And in those days when there was no diagnosis of autism then. So of course, just conclude what we call the manifestation. So we took the boy to a room where praying, the more we shout, the, boy, the more the boy was screaming. But then it got to a point, the mother was crying helplessly and compassion came upon us. And we asked the father, whatever is responsible, it must be genetic store, whatever is responsible, father, please remove it. When we prayed, nothing happened. The mother left but I stand here to announce to you, this day that boy has been made whole. <laughs> Young adult now, but originally it was not so. The Bible says that the name of Jesus, every name must bow. Oh, sir, okay, that's okay. There was no instant healing. Do you want me to give you another one? That we got to know. The man shared his testimony on this altar. He had the cancer of the truth. Elderly man. Serving the Lord. And then he was scheduled to be taken to hospital for surgical operation. Then he went for his prayer walk. And he told God, God is okay. If my service is over now. I will come and join you. So you don't want me to preach for you again. That's all right. That's okay. But I guess God was just looking at him. That look at this boy. Do you know the one you are dealing with? So they planned everything. And then they moved him to the hospital. And when he got there, God was waiting for him. God will wait for you. You know, when they laying down to get the examination done, the x-ray, all those stuff done, the doctors were screaming, what happened? You've done the operation somewhere. You've done the operation. So I said, no, what are you talking about? I said, we've examined you and we can see where they have caught you. So who caught him? Who removed the cancerous growth? Who put him back together? Up to today, he's still alive. Still preaching the gospel. The last time he came here, over 90, the way he climbed the stairs, you'd be scared. He was not taking step one by one, just galloping. And the Lord said, if you serve me, I will bless you. I will bless your food in case what you are eating is poisonous. I will bless your waters. Or in case it's genetical, I will remove sickness from the midst of you. How can God do this? The Bible says our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he has done before, he can do again. I don't know how long your sickness has been with you, but I want you to stand on your feet. As we ask the Father, whatever is responsible for my infirmity, Whatever is responsible for this sickness, whether with me or with my seed or with my children, by the blood of the Lamb, remove in the name of Jesus. Come on, go ahead and begin to pray. Father, visit me today. In the name of Jesus, choose me, oh God. Choose me, oh God. Choose me, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, I call upon you. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth by the blood, by the blood, by the blood, by the blood. Nothing but the blood. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Surprise me, O oh God. Surprise me, O oh God. Surprise my doctors. Give me a mega testimony that will surprise my pastor. In the name of Jesus. Do it, O oh God. Do it, O oh God, yes, yes, yes. in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Look at me for a second. You heard the testimony. 
but for the sake of those that were not there when the testimony was not being shared. Please don't limit the Holy One of Israel. A man came to one of our meetings, impotent. A man, handsome, rich, good looking, but impotent. Nobody could see what was going with him, but he knew what was going with him. When the word was coming, the word of prophecy came, there's somebody here, what is missing in your part is being restored. And suddenly he screamed. He couldn't wait for the testimony time. But eventually when he got the opportunity, they gave him the microphone, he didn't use the microphone. They say, sir, what happened? He said, I'm zipping. They said, what are you doing? He said, I want to show you. When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion away, they were like them that dream dreams. Yes. Your healing will surprise your doctor. Your healing will surprise your pastors. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated for a second. Because when God chooses you for a divine visitation, no demon can hold you back. No demon. It does not matter what is going on. Because there's bound to be a deliverance. This man in John chapter 2 that we saw earlier on for 38 years, he was in John chapter 5, was on the same spot. Was on the same spot. People were coming and going. He was looking. Do you know in life at times, we look all around us and we see others with speed. We see others smiling. We see others settled. And you begin to wonder, God, when will it be my time? I decree this day, your time has come. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, somebody says this, as big as the elephant is, you can tame an elephant. Tie a rod to an elephant's neck. And that elephant will begin to go around in circles. Because somebody tampered with his brain. If only the elephant will know what has been tied around him had no hold on him. The Bible says God has given us that name. That the mention of that name, every name must bow. But without revelation, man is in trouble. If only you know what you have. So this man was there. And then, because he's been there for so long, he couldn't move. Stagnation. He couldn't do anything. Until Jesus surprised him. Out of many, he was chosen. I, I read the Bible. Many invalid folks were there. And Jesus left number one, number 10, number 30, number 40, number 50, number 60. Maybe Jesus was mingling in between them. But there was somebody specifically that heaven had chosen. I pray in this season, God will choose you. That's why I don't care who is mocking you. I don't care who is looking at you. I don't care who has got your reports. Medically, maritally. I don't care. When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion away, it's always with, with a brand new beginning. They were like them that dream dreams. Say, am I the same person? Am I the same fellow? And, I, and I'm smiling here. You know why? Because God will surprise you. Again, in our church, not elsewhere. One of us went to the immigration office for his papers. And someone, one satanic man, just sat across him. Every question, no, no, sir, no, this one, no, that one, no. And our guy just thought, well, this case is an impossible one. But he was praying, God, show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. And in those days, there was no mobile phone. So the phone rang behind it. And the immigration man just went behind and picked the phone only to be talking, I, I'm guessing now, maybe to his girlfriend or his ex-wife or somebody. And then the fellow said whatever he said, and the man said, will you stop this nonsense? Look, I said, don't call me again. He banged the phone. And the venom inside of him, he wanted to take a revenge on our brother. 
And he looked and says, hey, you, I've been dealing with, I said, no, 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 no. So he grabbed one stamp and then stamped the passport. Bang. Threw it to him. He said, just get out. And the one left. Croydon, he got downstairs. At the bus stop, about to be crying. Said, God, so I'm going back to Accra. I don't want to say Lagos so that you won't guess right. He said, so I'm going back home. Hey. But somehow something just told him. Well, let's see your results. After all, you have failed. When he opened the passport, instead of saying you have been denied, he saw permanent stay, indefinite. <laughs> Were you at the bus stop? <laughs> he said, jumping about, screaming, hey, who, wah. Wow. Divine surprise. It's your turn. Yeah. Where you have been written now, you'll be written here. In the name of Jesus. No more stagnation for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. But because of time, do you know there are some fire you can't fight? Why don't you call upon the Lord of hosts? There are some situations you can't handle. When it comes to your progress, there are some things. I, I don't know. People say, oh no sir, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you better know. When you are married and your wife is not calling you daddy, you better know. If you have the means, you don't need to struggle, respect me. Grace will come, but when there is no performance. So it means that we need deliverance. The Lord of hosts can fight for you. Psalm 27 is there, or Psalm 24 rather, is there, 7 to 10. The Bible says, this Lord of hosts is powerful, is mighty, is strong. When he fights for you, victory is sure. Though the man was paralyzed, God stepped in. He said, whatever is blocking you, I want to remove it. And God removed that thing. Let me move on quickly because of time. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter about the number of years you'll be in your situation. Mark chapter 5, if you read from verses 1 to 15, we call him the madman of Gadara. He's no longer a madman. But we should call him the evangelist of Gadara. But they wrote him off. He was living in the tomb. He was there. Oh, sir, I'm not living in the tomb. Where are you living? The middle of the night, what is troubling you? What is going on? But Jesus chose this man. Again, look at the word. Mark chapter 5. Jesus came to a city. The only person he ministered to was that man. After the miracle, he left. And that man was there, mad. People were running away from him. He ran towards Jesus. Remember now, make peace with me. Mad man, who told him about Jesus? He has never seen him before. But on, on his day of divine visitation, he knew something was on. Listen to me. Anytime your time comes, guess what will happen to you? In case you are not sensitive. The way you pray will change. The way you worship will change. The way you honor the Lord will change. Something will tell you. You don't know. You can't just pray. You just know something is pushing you. I want to pray. I want to do this. I want to. Something, somehow. That man ran towards Jesus. Because of time, Jesus healed him. But you know what surprised me most? Is that the Bible now says he sat by the side of Jesus in his right mind, not naked. Amen. Who brought the garments? automatically, when the situation changed, men donated. Take my coat. Take my cap. Take my shoe. I don't know what you will take. No, it's your turn. Chosen for a divine visitation. Father, help me restore my destiny. Help me and cover my nakedness. Father, help me that my mind will be restored. So I don't know. I don't know. Because when the mind is troubled, delay will be obvious. When the mind is troubled, people will know what is going on. But we'll pray this day. Please stand. As you hold your neighbor to your right, and if you can to your left, that by the blood of the Lamb, whatever is troubling your mind, not making you to be focused, bringing stagnation into your destiny, 
I remove in the name of Jesus. Come on, go ahead and pray. Pray in the name of the Lord that the Lord that will help you, the Lord will defend you, the Lord will set you free in the name of Jesus. Your mind will be alert. You will think clearly. Oh, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth in the name of Jesus. 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 Do it, oh God. Do it, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, let me hear your loudest. Amen. Please be seated in Jesus' name. Oh, but sir, that's all right. My case is not like that. My own case, if only I can prosper. Look at this man for 38 years. What do you call economy when you are on the same spot? So the Bible did not tell us. So must have been begging for food. Begging for assistance. Over and over because he was struggling. But the day Jesus chose this man, his economy changed. I, I love it. And we said it over and over. Luke 5, 1 to 7. Solid businessman. They call him Peter the fisherman. His name has changed. He's no longer the fisherman. But the apostle. But he was there originally. He was struggling. And he was trying. And like some of us, you know, you are trying. They, they were doing accountancy. You have a degree there. Then they said computer, then you have another degree. Then, then they said housing, so you have a diploma. If I, when we see you now, we don't know what to call you anymore. Whether doctor, accountant, or whatever. But you are trying. But the more you are trying, the more frustration you are getting. And things are not working. But then, out of many fishermen that day, Peter was chosen. Chosen for a divine visitation. Why not the other people? I don't want to mention their names. Why not? And then he saw, he said, sir, borrow me your boat. And Peter now gave him his boat to use to preach. And then Hebrews eleven six. remember now, please hear me because I'm building faith here. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That's why I laid the foundation, make peace with God. It means agree with God. If God says, I am your healer, agree with him. If God says, I will prosper you, agree with him. I'm not talking about your neighbor. I'm not talking about your competitor. Face your destiny. Forget the doctrine. Forget the Greek. Forget the Hebrew. God, when will you make me a classical example of your mercy? Oh, by the way, next Sunday is our Thanksgiving Sunday. Come on, give the Lord a clap of it. But do you want me to shock you? Do you know you don't deserve to be alive? Not by might. I was thinking about that. I said, yes, Lord. Next Sunday, oh, we're going to dance. We're going to do this. And then the thought crossed my mind. You, do you think you are qualified? Others like you have been buried during the same period. Will you acknowledge him? Will you honor him? And now we are now want to dance before him. And now you are pocketing, just walking, just looking at everybody. Eh? Why are you doing like that? You are not dignified. Ah, you receive mercy. Oh, the other time one of my children was traveling. He said, Dad, I said, yeah, what's going on? He said, I'm going for a business in Lagos. I'm going on Friday. I said, the Lord will go with you. Then on Sunday, I saw him again. I said, what? Well, you didn't travel? He said, oh, I've been and I'm back. I said, what? You've been and you're back. Oh, in our days. Before you came. <laughs> if you're going to travel in December, You'll be telling everybody in January. We're traveling. We're going home. We're going home. We are going home. So you go there to have breakfast. And then you are back for dinner. What? Our God is in the heavens. But, but you know it's not by might. It's when God turns to you. 
Oh, some wants to travel like you. They have to put special savings aside. That's why we, we used to tell them we're traveling in December. You are saving, saving, saving. And how much was the ticket then? 290 pounds. You save for about seven months. But now, look at you. But you know the issue? Okay, go ahead if you want to clap. Now you want to travel, you can call 10, 15 people to travel with you. You will house them, feed them, and you don't feel it. But if only you know the potential that you have. Because the more you honor God, the more you praise him, the more you acknowledge him. I love David. Say, who am I? And what is my father's house? God will choose you. Come on, I say God will choose you. In the name of Jesus. He, you know, Peter, Peter, Peter gave the master his boat. And then, because he was chosen, of course, Jesus now gave him divine directions. Launch to the right. All that you have been struggling for, I have the key. I have the formula. I created you. I created the fish. They will respond to you. And guess what the man obeyed? He made peace with God. He agreed with Jesus. He followed the direction. And when he launched, he screamed. You know, there are blessings and there are blessings. They call this one boat sinking blessing. That is, you are blessed so much that your boat is now sinking. Oh, it's a sad, that's, that was a coincidence. You better be careful. At another time, this same Peter man was arrested with Jesus because of tax issues. VAT, you know the case. When they write you, better pay. Every day, the interest is piling up. And Jesus told Peter, he said, you have a hook in your pocket. Go to the nearest river. May God direct you. He said, cast your hook. The first fish you catch, open the mouth. You'll find a coin chosen by God, by divinity. There is nothing when we hear testimonies and I see people are just mine. One of, one of us was sharing his testimony. He said, sir, what is wrong? Can't people see what I'm saying? I said, we can't. You have been chosen. We cannot. You, you can see. You can see. You can see ideas. Ideas without money you can see. You can see what we work. The land is responding to you effortlessly. And we are tilling the ground. But because we have not been chosen. But you have been chosen. So you now say, oh, Papa, pray for me because I have a branch office in New York. I have a one in Shanghai. I, we don't even have one in Shanghai. You are going everywhere because you have been chosen. May God choose you. Come on, I say, may God choose you in the name of Jesus. But because sometimes, can I say this to all of us here, including our children? No more failures. No more frustrations. No more stagnations in the name of Jesus. You know, no, no, again, you may not like it. So God says this in this word now. He said, I will open the windows of heaven. And jokingly, I said this many, many years ago. I said, who knows? Maybe that man, Bill Gates, is a Christian. If he's not a Christian, I don't want to say the next word. It stole something from the Bible. How can you name your product Windows? So he created something, he created an idea, and he called it Windows. Windows 98, is it Windows now? 98, Windows 97, Windows 94, Windows... So every year is another window. And up to now, we're still contributing to him. One idea. I will open up the windows of heaven and give you a blessing, not blessings, a blessing that you will not have room enough to contain. Ah, say, sir, please don't do that. We're talking about faith. Remember? Your future will be glorious. You know, I'm smiling because you're, you don't write yourself off. On this altar, not elsewhere. 
one of our children play for the Olympics with Great Britain. And then he played, he played, he played. When that boy was playing, I brought him to the hotel. I said, my son, the boy said, I know my parents. So tall, the father so short, and the mother is tall again. But the point I want to make is this. The father was not a soccer player. The father was not a sports person. But heaven coded that boy. Oh, you need to see the parents the way they were walking. Glory, glory. When your child is outstanding, it's to your credit. May God reward you. I, 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 need, I need to close. I need, I need. <laughs> I need to close. One of you sent me that stuff. So this boy kept on. Um, doing very well in school. So the day of graduation was to come. But unfortunately, the father was poor. The father was poor. So they were going. And then big, big cars were going about. Big, big cars. And they were doing what they were doing. And then the boy was poor, good things, you know, was not properly dressed. But then when the prize giving period came, nine prizes were called out. And every time they called the name, the same name. And while the boy was going up, people were clapping, clapping, shabbily dressed, clapping, clapping, shabbily dressed, clapping, clapping, shabbily dressed. But somebody was in the audience looking at the boy. And then, at the end of the show, everybody were dispersing, taking tea, taking this, taking that. And the man came near the boy and said, son, congratulations. He said, thank you, sir. He said, from today, I will adopt you. Originally, he was not qualified, but God coded him with something that attracted somebody's attention. It's happened to all of us at one point or the other. You go to the point of interview, you know you have messed up or somebody in the panel will like you. Somehow you just know you, you, you are not there. You sit in the train and somebody will join you on the same seat and then point so what, what do you do? Where are you from? Oh, I work so, so if you need help, please call me. When you are divinely chosen, effortlessly you begin to live you begin to make progress while you are sitting. Hold your neighbor to the right and to the left. That favor from above, that grace received today. Come and pray for your neighbor in the name of Jesus because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Wherever you may be located, I prophesy to you, the Lord will help you. The Lord will assist you. The Lord will meet all of your needs according to his riches in glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do it, O oh God. Do it, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people said, Deuteronomy 8.18, I'm about to close. And God said, hey, I am the Lord your God. I'm the one that gives you power to create wealth in order to establish the covenant. You must know the purpose of your wealth. You must know the purpose of your healing. You must know some of us will receive miracles and then we keep our mouth shut because you don't want to tell the world so that they won't know what you've been through. Ah, did you heal yourself? Oh, sir, you don't really understand eh, when I have this. In our church, there was a young boy many years ago in, in this church. In this church, who came in with nothing. And by his grace, hear the word, hear the word. Oh, we call for this. We want to support the gospel. We call for that he wants to do it. So one day he came to my house. I said, what are you, what are you looking for? Have you sinned? And he smiled. He said, no. I'm a sinner, but God has forgiven me. 
but sir, I know where I want to be. I am not there. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I paraphrase because he's listening to me and he knows my heart on this. Just one introduction, change the color. One introduction, one telephone call. I'm the one that gives you power. I'm the one that enables you. Listen to me. When you are serving the Lord your God, especially in the area of the gospel, I've said it before. When last did you use your personal money to publish tracts? When last? Anybody can dance, and I'm okay with that. We need to dance. Do you know the reason why I look back at times when they are turning the volume? Ask him. I said, what happened? He said, the sound is not correct. I said, why is the sound not correct? Go and correct it. He says, I, I can't go. I said, climb the roof. He says, the Twitter is bombed. I said, what is Twitter? Okay, 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 okay. Go and get the price for me. So he ran back. He said, 2,000 plus. I said, ah. I said close it. Oh, sir, no, no, you don't really understand. Our mixer, I said, what? Well, the mixer is working. He said, the mixer is not working. I said, it's working. But because he won't allow me to write. I said, okay, okay, go on. Go and get a coat for me. And, and they brought it. And, and I know you think I'm exaggerating. How much was it? The cheapest, 30000 I said, you better call those who are, tweet, who are turning the thing. If they turn it again, I will turn them. I'm just joking. Can I hear your amen? And yet, there are history makers. There are watchers of history. Every man built a house. And, and yet, there are people. That young boy was always, always looking. What is missing? What is this? What is that? No wonder he's doing what he's doing today. Our God is in the heavens. He will empower you. It will give what I call a divine connection in the name of Jesus. When we have the time, next time we speak about miraculous provision in the mighty name of Jesus. Because this man was there. Hey, everything was bad, bad, bad. But as I close, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus located him. Do you want me to shock you right now? As I'm speaking to you, Jesus is looking for you. Look at the word Revelation 1. Whether you like it or not, in Revelation 1, 8, the Bible says, our God is the beginning and the ending, the Alpha and the Omega. But guess what God always do? He makes everything new. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who was going about doing good, looking for a boy, looking for a girl, looking for a man, looking for a woman whose heart is yearning. Give me a new beginning. Give me a new beginning. He makes everything new. Thank God that man responded, and then what happened? Everything changed. When you respond to God, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, everything will become new. The Bible says old things are passed away. Have you been weeping? God will turn it around. Have you been frustrated? God will turn it around. You know why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Is it not in the word, if God be for us, who can be against us? He is in the word. Of course, when this man was healed, like our modern language, the tide turned. He became a celebrity. He picked up his bed. He started walking. People started asking him questions. What happened? What this? What that? Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude... It's one thing for God to be looking for you. It's another for you to welcome him. The paralyzed man could have said, are you blind? Can't you see my state? You want me to stand up? Can't you see my legs? Please get out. But you know there are people who are still saying that. That's why Isaiah the prophet prophesied in Isaiah 27 verse 5. He said, let them lay hold of my protection. Let them make peace 
with me. Let them make peace with me. Simple message for today. But it can resound in your destiny. Because what you do right now will determine many things. I've been a Christian. Are you still on fire? Oh, I'm a child of God. Are you still alive? When last did you witness to somebody? When last did you preach the gospel? But sir, I don't really understand. When last did you pray? But I'm busy. Have you calculated God out of your schedule? God, you stay where you are. I will stay where I am. Don't let us disturb one another. And things will be okay. And it's all right. God will not be upset. Because you don't know about your potential. But my prayer is this. The tide will turn for you. In the name of Jesus. Revelation 3.20, the Bible says God is knocking at the door of your heart. Every one of us at one point or the other, there is another level you can get to. Return back to your first love. Return back to your zeal. Return back to your fire. Return back when God used to depend on you. But now you are grieving the Holy Spirit. You are grieving the Holy Spirit. You don't even know God forbid. My pastor told me, he said, when the Holy Spirit leaves a man, the man may not even be aware. I want us to stand. Stand before the Lord. Because God of heaven will not reject you. He will choose you in the name of Jesus. Chosen for a divine visitation. As we close our eyes, I want you to ask the Father. Jehovah God of heaven, I call upon you. Please remember me for good. Choose me for your divine visitation. Make me a classical example of your grace. A classical example of your favor. A classical example of your mercy. This man was not qualified, but you qualify him. Please, Jehovah, qualify me. Pray to him. Maybe in your health, pray to him. In your wealth, pray to him. In your career, pray to him. The speed is lacking, pray to him. Troubled in your mind, pray to him. Heart attack, pray to him. Bone disease, pray to him. In the name of Jesus, Father, give me a surprise in my health. Heal me, oh God. Let me be a surprise to my doctors. Let me be a surprise to my pastor. Let me be the head and not the tail in the name of Jesus. Or you have been defeated as the Father to fight for you, to make you a winner, to make you a champion, to make you to be graced, to make you to be alive in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, I will not be reduced to nothing. I will not be emptied. I will not be barren. I will not be a failure in the name of Jesus. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' name we pray.